I really like to test new products and that is why I am so excited to open this week's box, the Kuga Aqua 120 all-in-one water cooling solution. The Aqua series from Kuga comes in a variety of sizes. This with a single 120mm fan, a 240 shroud with two 120 fans, a 280 variation with two 140 fans and the biggest one with three fans totaling at 360mm of radiator. But before we get to the details, let's take the Aqua 120 aside and have a look what we can get out of this box. We will receive a bag of goodies with the brackets for each individual platform. Whereas on the compatibility side of things, this cooler can be mounted to almost every AMD socket there is from AM2 up to AM4. And on the Intel side, this package includes all the brackets for up to 2066, but from now on, the Aqua and the Halo series from Kuga will receive an upgrade and will be shipped with the LGA 1200 series bracket. Now taking a closer look at the radiator itself. The aluminum radiator comes with a Vortex VB120 fan. With up to 1800 RPMs through a PVM connection, it's supposed to push about 70.5 CFM. The hydrodynamic B-rings and these little cuts in the blades are supposed to never let this thing operate at more than 35 decibels. On the water block side of things, we have a big copper plate with a non-disclosed water pump, but according to the manual, it's supposed to turn at 3200 RPM consistently. The thing that makes this cooler attractive though is of course all of its RGB. With an acrylic ring all around the water block and a somewhat see-through logo in the middle, this thing should look really great in any case with a glass side panel. Now there are a couple of things I wanted to mention before we get into the performance. First off, the tube connections on the water block are turnable, which makes installation very easy. The tubes are 400mm long and sleeved all the way through with some rubber material. And lastly, the water block is powered by a SATA power port and can be hooked up to the addressable RGB header of your mainboard in order to control all of your RGB by software. Additionally, there even is a RGB header extender which lets you connect even more devices. But using the RGB header is not mandatory at all, as Kuga also includes AIR remote, which makes this product perfectly usable for people without a RGB header. So the next thing would be looking at the numbers. But to separate the specifications and the numbers crunching, let's enjoy a couple of B-rolls of the Aqua 120 built into different cases. So now that we are all calm, let's have a look at how we make these numbers. To test the performance, we will compare it to basically everything we have in the studio. Starting off with the included AMD turbine, just to have a baseline, followed by the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim, to compare a cheap air cooler to a entry-level all-in-one, and then followed by the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, just to see how much and if a top-level air cooler can crush the Aqua 120. And for all of this testing, we can finally use our new test bench with a Ryzen 3600X and some CPU stress testing software. But in order to exclude any differences due to the included thermal paste, we will only be using Arctic Silver 5. Looking at the numbers, we can see that the baseline AMD cooler kept the 3600X at 75 degrees Celsius under full blast and at 77 degrees with 50% fan speed. The Pure Rock Slim was a bit better with 71 degrees at full speed and 74 at 50%. And of course the Dark Rock Pro doesn't really need to do a lot as the Ryzen is at 65 degrees at 100% and 68 degrees at 50%. But where does the Aqua 120 fit into this graph? Well, after the test we had to rewrite the rest of our script because with 65 degrees under full blast and 67 with 50% fan speed, it is just as good as the Dark Rock Pro. 
Another test that we wanted to do is how much RPM is needed to keep the CPU at 70 degrees under full load. Basically, this gives us a noise level, a real-world application and a effectiveness comparison. And for this, we took the Intertech C303 mirror with three front fans and hit the CPU with full load. And then we just manually adjusted the fan speed until the CPU stayed at 70 degrees. The AMD turbine failed the test and with 100% of its fan speed, it kept the 3600X at 79 degrees. The Pure Rock Slim also failed the test with 75 degrees under full speed. The Dark Rock Pro, on the other hand, managed to keep it under 70 degrees with 29% of its fan speed. And finally, the Aqua 120 also managed to keep up, but had to use 40% of its fan speed. And just for comparison, how the Aqua 120 sounds with 100%. Looking at the numbers, we can see that the Aqua 120 doesn't get blown away by a beefy air cooler. But where does this leave us? Well, for an entry-level all-in-one, this is not bad at all. It manages to compete against a monster like the Dark Rock Pro 4 and is still about $20 cheaper. With a new egg price of around $69 for the US and 15 in Europe, the Kuga Aqua 120 is still on the very cheap end of the all-in-one price spectrum and only needs to compete against things like the Cooler Master ML120L and Thermaltake TH120. But before we end this video, let's quickly go over the things that we've liked and things that we disliked. Performance-wise, the fan is great considering the price. But if I take a look at the noise level, the Aqua 120 immediately loses against something like the Dark Rock Pro 4. It is not loud by any means, but the pump does produce a lot of noise. The RGB effects are alright, the remote is also fine, and with the RGB software you can basically do whatever you want. The tube length is alright, you can fit it wherever you want, but a positive thing is the fact that they are sleeved, which just takes away the rubber look and makes everything look more classy. So all in all the product is just fine, and I can recommend it to everybody who wants to start a journey into entry-level all-in-ones. But there is one thing that bothers me. If we take a look at the packaging image, the tubes are clearly connected on the right side of the water bottle. And that's the case for every 3D created image which Kuga is showing on their website or is being used as a presentation image by the online retail sites. But if we take a look at the cooler, the tubes are connected on the left side. Now, this doesn't mean that there is any manufacturing issue, because if we take a look at the other pictures which were taken for the sake of reviews, for example, the tubes are always on the left side. This doesn't really change anything except for the fact that it would be a bit of a tingling to get the radiator mounted on top of the case. But ultimately we cannot find any appropriate reason why the online images are portraying a different orientation than the actual product. But despite this inconsistency, the product is alright. The performance is great, the noise level not so much, but still in a normal range for an entry-level all-in-one, and the build quality is also just fine. So to wrap this video up, we hope that you've liked the video and that you've been informed enough to make a conscious buying decision. The official website and affiliate links for the Kuga 120 are in the description below, so if you want, you can always check them out. Anyway, we hope to see you back in the next video, but until then, you can give us some feedback with a thumb up or thumb down, or maybe even a comment. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at one of these not totally random videos.